<laughs> so before we get up out of here, man, we got one last thing to talk about, man. And you know, this is what I love right here. This is for my UFC heads. We had that big UFC 260 fight this weekend. Francis and Ganu versus Steve Baby Yochic for the heavyweight championship of the world. Oh, it was so beautiful. It was beautiful. Did you get a chance to see any of the highlights, man? I did check out some of the highlights. Oh my gosh. I did check out some of the highlights. Not sure you nightmare. Yeah, it looks like Stipe was just getting rocked kind of the whole time. So, it was it was one of those fights where you had the classic battle of the power puncher, the KO guy, Francis Ngannou, versus the highly skilled, you know, but still knockout power uh, champion in terms of Stipe. Now, Stipe was um, the longest tenured champion at heavyweight in terms of just title defenses and everything like that. And he had already beat this guy as well, like destroyed him, wasn't even close. We just kept taking him down, took him down. Uh, it was Stipe's personal record, but took him down six times in the fight. Like, just, it was bad. We were watching the fight like, yo, are you for real right now? Like, this that scary guy? Like, this is how you beat him. So that was the anticipation of, all right, can he do it again? Can he take him down again? Has this guy's game evolved? Because even though he was on a three-fight win streak, he literally was only in the ring for like, or the octagon for only like three minutes combined in those three fights because they were all just knockouts in the first round. So it was a lot of, you know, speculation of if he could do it. And the first telltale sign that let us all know it was going to be a different night, Steve Miocic, he goes to take him down. This is after he got rocked because Francis, he got, he got dynamite in his hands. He had caught him early, bop. All right, cool. So Steve fills it and he goes to take him down. And when my man Francis, he hits the sprawl from a wrestling standpoint, circles around, takes his back, and you're just like, oh, we didn't know he was even capable of wrestling. Like, we've never seen him have to wrestle, like, ever. And every time he's been taken down, it's looked like just bad, like he doesn't know what he's doing. And when we saw that, that changed everything. Because now Stipe knew he had to stay on his feet. And from there, that played right into what Francis wanted to do. Mm. Yeah, it, it was beautiful to see his growth because you never know with some of these guys who they come off as one trick ponies. You're like, well, we've only seen this from this guy. We've never seen you do the other side. But for him, he literally showed a whole other element of his game, and it made him very scary now. So is he in his prime? Could this? Oh, be a, without a doubt. Could like, this be a run? Yeah, like so. This is the, this is the thing. It's only two people that are going to give him an issue right now. So he can go on a run in terms of, we'll, we'll say two and a half, because obviously he has the option of rematching Stipe, which we would all love to see that trilogy. Even though he uh, got knocked out, I still think Stipe would beat him if they fought the third time. Whoa. No different than when, so think about this. He was the underdog, though, in this fight. He's always been the underdog. He was, even when he fought uh, Daniel Cormier, right, who people view as like one of the greatest, or, or he's in the conversation in terms of what he was able to do being a double champ, light heavyweight and heavyweight, right? The first time Stipe and DC fought, DC knocked them out. Like, clean, sleep. And we're all like, oh, it's over. Then they fought the next two times. The second time, Stipe knocked him out. And then the third time, Stipe just destroyed him for five rounds. So, seeing Stipe get knocked out isn't new. It's just like Stipe got caught. And the problem was, once he got caught, even though he didn't go down initially, he had a false sense of security happen. So, while he gets, he gets hit and he's, like, stunned, he's backpedaling, right? And while he's backpedaling, he's like, he throws this jab. And it connects. And Francis stops for a second and pauses. Him kind of being in and out of it, he thinks he has him hurt. So now instead of him retreating and getting himself back, he, all right, I'm going to go back in this thing. And as soon as he goes back in, Francis went another one. And that's when you see the picture of his, like, leg folded up and falling back. But yeah. it was like, you can see, he wasn't out. You know what I mean? Most of the guys, as soon as Francis touches them, they go to sleep. So the element was there. It was just that little lapse of the little jab stuck him. And he just, oh, all right, I can go back in this thing and got caught. I think, man, if they fight again, though, it's different because we haven't seen fighters last that long with Steve, I mean, with uh, Francis. This dude, is he, he's been, what, six, six and a half rounds with him now, right? Five from the first fight and then one and a half from this, uh, this last fight. So, to me, I'm just like, I think there's still some intrigue to go with that fight. That's one option. The next option, you got John Jones. That's the money fight. Bones Jones has finally made his bump up the heavyweight. And he's just in the waiting hole right now, right? Because he was going to fight whoever the winner was. But now they're trying to get the money negotiated because this is one of those mega fights. Like, break the bank, crazy fight, greatest UFC fighter of all time. If and Stipe would have won, it would have been Stipe and Jones? Yeah, yeah. If okay. it would have been Stipe. Yeah, Jones was going to fight whoever was going to win this fight. Okay. Like, that was how it was going to be promoted, right? So they're the champion now. Yeah, yeah. What's Jones, what's Jones so, at? So Jones is at 205. He was there, right? He relinquished that title. And now he, he officially bumped up the heavyweight. 
So this is gonna be the he first time in his career. Here. He's the one seed. We we all know. <laughs> like like it's like you don't worry about with but when Bone right, said he's right. one of the heavyweight like. It's like with, with Conor McGregor. When Conor was Conor at the time, when he wanted to bump up the 155 and 170 to fight, it's like, yo, you're fighting for the belt because you bring that draw. That's the money you bring. So with Jones, he's that type of Is draw. he a little bit past his prime? Where's he at? No, no. I mean, he's on the back end without a doubt. He could have been retired if he wanted to. But for him, he had. it's weird because he's older, but he had a three-year no fight when he was doing with the legal stuff, right? Between... The stuff that happened where he, he had, had the, the DUI, he had the DUI, then he had the PD thing. So it all happened like back to back. So it was like a three year span of no fighting. So even though he's older, he's still like younger. You know what I mean? Because sure. he had that layoff, but he's been fighting for so long that it never was a drop off when he came back. So even though he slowed down a ton in terms of his output, you can still see his fight IQ. That's what gets him out of fights now. Like when he wants to pick his spot to fight and be a little more active and aggressive. He could do that, but he's very Floyd Mayweather like at this point. You think about Floyd when Floyd was pretty boy Floyd, man, he's throwing hands, right? He's trying to knock you out, he's trying to tag you up. Once he got older, it was money Mayweather. I'm straight defense, you're not gonna hit me, I'm gonna point you to death. That's how John fights now. So people kind of view it, they don't like it as much because it's not as exciting. But he takes guys and you're just in there and they're like, they can't hit him. Like he controls him with his leg kicks, he controls him with his grappling. Takes guy to the ground if he wants to. Like he's just different in that standpoint. Boring. Some people don't don't like it, but you respect it. You know what I mean? So for me, I mean that's just the big fight because, like I said, the names and the styles. Because once again, you're gonna have yeah, that'll definitely be a contrast. Yeah, styles. It, it, it's like a, it will be a higher end version of Francis versus Stipe. As big as that last fight, well, this is gonna be the bigger version because of Jones is what we view a higher end version of Stipe. But you got the mystique around Jones of can he bump up and do it at heavyweight now, right? So that is the fight that we all want, and that's Francis the one. is huge too. Yeah, heck yeah, he, he's, Whenever he's he looked a at monster, bro. To uh, Stipe, it was just like, yeah, <clears throat> I know Stipe is good. He's the guy Stipe that's Stipe defending the uh, the crown right yeah. now. But oh, holy hell, how's he gonna win this, dude? Stipe, they uh, so Francis came in at two sixty five, and they said Stipe weighed like two thirty for the fight. Crazy, John. John is built like Chandler. Anybody know Chandler Jones? You, you look at the edge rusher from Arizona Cardinals. John looks just like him. That's a grown, like, big man. Big, big man. So you don't have to worry about that. You know what I mean? So that 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 that's the fight that we all want to see happen. Now, with Jones, it's going to be interesting because it's the money element. For him, he's already said, like, yo, I want to be paid. I don't want to. He's like, when it's Conor McGregor, it's, oh, well, we expect we're going to have to pay Conor a lot. But when it's Jones, like, oh, you're scared to take a fight because you don't want to get, you, you know what I mean? And he's like, nah, man, I want to get paid. The same way you know certain people are going to come in here and ask for money and you don't even bulk it, you just pay them, I want that same type of respect. So that's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. But we have a third option, though. Well, the third option is this, Derek Lewis, the Black Beast. Now, he's the guy, you might know him, he was the one where he knocked, I was like, you're my balls. Like, yeah, yeah. like yep. he's another knockout. He, he just knocked out someone yes, like a month ago. Curtis Blades, that was yes. The, that was the one uh -huh. UFC match I was watching. Yeah, Yeah. so for Derek, Derek actually holds the record. He was getting owned the whole time. He's a knockout guy. He was getting dominated. But that's what makes it interesting, right? He's a knockout guy. He, he was like, yo... I knew he was going to beat me. All I had to do was wait for the uh, for the uppercut. And he literally, the whole fight, he just stood there, hit, 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 kick, kick, kick. And when that guy went to take his one shot, caught him with the uppercut, ended the fight. So Derek Lewis is the other intriguing guy because Derek actually owns the record for most knockouts at heavyweight. Okay. Okay, whereas Francis is number two. So you see how, okay, well, not even at heavyweight, it's just UFC history right now. So when you look at Derek Lewis, you're like, you have the intrigue of those two guys going because they're both knockout artists. And anything can happen. Anything can happen. But that's another one that's intriguing. So if you're John Jones, you're excited because, yo, this I get first dibs at the negotiation. But if it falls through, you still are good. Because if he fights Stipe in a rematch or he fights Derrick Lewis, you're still in prime position to fight whichever one of those guys come on, on top of that belt. So if you're John, you're good. But I think for fight fans, we want to see that fight happen now. We don't want to have to wait. Mm. Yeah. How do you see it playing out? What's the timeline, you think? How soon could it be done? Um, <clears throat> nah, I, I think if they make this fight happen, man, it would be... If it's already March, it would be fall. I Ooh. think it would be fall time frame. Just because for Francis, even though he didn't take a ton of punishment, like he still got hit up. You know what I mean? He got hit up. So unless it's, if it's a rematch, it'll happen sooner. If he goes the steep A route, you, will, you can see that in the summer. I think if it's John, though... I think we're looking a little bit more later September, 
October time frame. It sounds like the Stipe one would be better for two years down the line. Yes, yeah. Mm-hmm. Either the Jones or the Lewis one needs to happen yeah. sooner. I think, well, and we're, we should know something by the end of the week. Because, really? Yeah, be, in terms of, because Giant, like, he, he's he's giving us the AB, he's giving us the Juju. He, he's I'm going to retire. He's tweeting it, like, every day. So, we're like, oh, yeah, you got your meeting coming up with the UFC. Oh, you called him initially, and he's like, nah, we're not going over $3 million. You said you want to get for this much. Okay, bet. So, we're here. We're, he, he's letting us know. So he's like, yo, I got my meeting coming up. I think he said, uh, should be today. It's either today or tomorrow. He was like, yo, we got our meeting, so we're going to talk. and see, I'm going to see this offer that they sent over. Hopefully it's what it's supposed to be. I'm going to let you guys know. And he's been completely honest with this. He's been showing it every time. So These always yeah. get done, though, at some point. They do, but the problem is this. In UFC, similar to boxing, right, the politics have gotten in the way a little bit. For From a boxing standpoint, prime example, um, Bud Crawford, right? He, he's a monster... Um, Obviously, he has the belt at, I think it's one, oh my goodness, I think he's at 140 for boxing. And then you have Earl Spence, similar, right, dominant, right in that same weight class with two different promotions, right? So they won't fight each other right now because of ESPN is the promoter on one end, and then PBC is the promoter on the other end. And they're like, well, we want the fight to happen on our network. But if it comes on our network, this guy gets paid this, that guy's the B side, he gets paid less. And this dude's like, bro, I'm a champ. I'm undefeated as well. I want to get paid this. I'm not going to fight this dude on that network and get paid less. So that's the sticking point. And that's why we're probably not going to see that fight for probably another year or two easily. Could be longer. They might not ever fight. Think about what Mayweather and Pacquiao, how long it took for that fight Five to happen. Years. Right. Five years too late. So now we're over here like, we hope that this doesn't happen with the UFC because we've seen little bits of where negotiations have fallen and things like that have happened. We're just hoping that this doesn't become a common theme because it sucks, but... That's the knock on the UFC right now. Ever since they took the deal with ESPN and the pay-per-view money has changed, they haven't been paying their fighters as much. Mm-hmm. And they limit what they can get from a sponsorship standpoint. So typically in the past, a guy like John Jones didn't care what the UFC was going to pay him because he was getting millions from Nike. No way. He was getting points on the pay-per-view. So if it was a million buys, he was going to get a percentage of that. And then whatever the UFC paid him for the fight. Since UFC is taking over the ESPN and with their deal... Now, they don't get points on pay-per-view. Only the champions do. And it's like a, a, a weird point system in terms of how wow. they do it. And the pay <laughs> is drastically different now. And for Reebok, since that's the official like sponsor for UFC, you can't say, well, all right, I'm going to go over here to Nike and get paid a couple million. Reebok said, we're going to give you three different tiers. <laughs> your champion tiers, y'all get paid this. Your mid-tier guys get paid this. And your bottom guys get paid that. So even though I could be a company, I'm like, yo, I really love you, Deke. And I want to pay you a million dollars to wear my product because this is Reebok and you're in tier three. You're only going to get 20K right now for this fight. And you're just like, bro, are you serious right now? So that type of stuff has been going on. So that's another reason why more fighters. I mean, you think about not, not only, really not only John. Yeah, but not only John, Conor McGregor. He's, he's had those issues a little bit as well, too. So you can see, like, multiple guys have been voicing a lot more since the new deal has happened. But that's the only reason why I'm just like, I hope it does happen. But I wouldn't be surprised if for some reason it doesn't happen for the next two years. And that will probably be the reason why. So what's the benefit for the fighters with this deal? It's just being on ESPN, more publicity? More, yeah, because... But so that sucks if no, no, you're no, limited so, with your advertising. But this is the problem, right? Fo- uh, you know, on football, we have a union, right? So we can all say, hey, man, what is? it's not just about me. What's better for all the players, right? From player one, the superstar, to the guy that makes minimum. In uh, UFC, there's no union. Similar with boxing, there's no union. So, if I'm Conor McGregor, it doesn't benefit me to join a ESPN or a Reebok paid sponsorship group like that to guarantee we're going to have this floor from True. our pay. It doesn't benefit me. I have this crazy ceiling. It puts a cap on what I can make. Whereas if you're uh, a, a chick like Miranda Maverick, right? So, she's a fighter from the 757. Very young, starting on the UFC. For her, this is great. No one knows her, but you fight on ESPN. We get to see you. You fight on the pay-per-view card. We get to see that. You got a Reebok sponsorship now. Guaranteed we get to see that. So you can just see the difference of why it benefits some of the other fighters, but not like the mega fighters. But when you don't have a union, you don't have that common ground of, okay, what can we do to make all of us work out right here? So that's the problem right now. Yeah, so for the UFC, makes the most sense. Yeah. And then everything else falls in line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. 
We do. It's gonna be exciting though, man. I hope the Jones one comes through because as you're yeah. talking about all these, that's the one I would be most excited yeah. about, which is why I'm hoping it happens and maybe thinking it would happen. Yeah, man. I just think both sides would see that. Hey, the average person would want this. Like they I would definitely, definitely be would. watching this. They definitely would. Like you could get a casual viewer. That that's gonna For be sure. like a Conor McGregor fight. Like the casual viewer just turn on like, oh, I know this. All right, cool. But it should happen. But either way. The heavyweight division right now is, is very exciting because of what France was able to do. That that shook up the whole hierarchy. And if you're the UFC, that's what you wanted to win. Because you could market France as a lot better than Stipe. Stipe is like, you got the cool fireman story. He lives in Cleveland. Humble guy, things like that. Just a real feel-good story, but it's not baddest man on the planet. You don't get that much. Like, usually when you think of heavyweight champ, you think of like Mike Tyson. Like, that's the baddest man. Like, if I see him anywhere... I'm never thinking about trying him. Some people might think they could try Stipe. Just saying, it's a little different. Whereas France, you saw what Francis looked like. You never running up Yeah, when this dude said his best. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like, Jones probably won't beat him, you know? So, like, if, if Francis can fight the way that he showed against Stipe, he should, he should knock Jones out. Because he's going to show that Jones can't take him down. And Jones striking isn't what it used to be. Now, he'll be able to control the distance with his leg kicks. He does a great job of that in his grappling. But it's different when that guy's touching you on the way in to grapple. It's different when he's hitting you. Like, you, you're not going to take a lot of those. So that's why it's like, man, this could be really intriguing. But the thing is, John has taken down some of the best wrestlers we've ever seen. Ever. Taken on at will. We, we've seen John do that numerous times. So it's going to be interesting, man. Yeah, hopefully it happens. Yeah. What's the next big one? Um, I'm trying to think, man. Because that was, this was the big one right here, man. Let's see what we got coming up here from a UFC stand. I like it's we... I like when we get to talk a little, bo- a little, little combat sports. I don't want to call box guy. I, I, you got to switch them up. Let them know the difference here. I was even thinking on my way over. All right, so UFC is bigger than boxing right now. Oh yeah, it's, right? Not, it's not close. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But that's because the politics, the stuff that I talked about with boxing with the Bud Crawford, Earl Spence stuff, that's been going on. Even we said with Mayweather and McGregor. I mean Mayweather and Pacquiao, like that happens too much because in boxing people are more concerned with perfect records, whereas in UFC it's more so take the chance. Sure. Like, the chance is rewarded in UFC versus in boxing. It's like, it almost benefits you to never take a chance and be 50-0 and 0, and we would just love you being 50-0 and 0, and then you take that one mega fight and if you lose, like, oh, he's 50-1. and 1. But we think, oh, when a guy loses one mega fight, we like, oh, that's the end of the world for that guy. Whereas in UFC, we said, bro, Francis got beat, got destroyed by Stipe, you know, three fights ago. But because it was three fights ago, no one even cares no more. We don't care if he's undefeated or not. We're like, yo, that dude is a monster. And that's the way the world's going. Mm-hmm. Boxing's way behind the times. Yes. 